good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back here at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries. My name is Moda. I will be your moderator. And I'd also like to invite you, if you're browsing around, you can have a seat. They are complimentary drinks. There's a lovely lady walking around and will serve you with the drinks. So please, 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 after lunch, come and have a seat. Or um, please watch at home because we are live streaming from the fair. We are browsing, to, uh, we are um, channeling to different countries. So also welcome to all our online guests. Our next topic will regard fuel cell engines enabling zero emission and renewable energy mobility. So I'm very much looking forward to this talk. Please welcome with me on stage the chief engineer of the European headquarter of US Hybrid, Mr. Mike Keane. Welcome. Thank you, Mona. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's an excellent show. Um, my name is Mike Keane. I'm the chief engineer of the European headquarters for US Hybrid. Ah, okay, we're fine. Um, so, okay, US Hybrid uh, is a group of companies. The U US Hybrid parent company specializes in electric powertrain systems. We also have a division called Mag Motor, which specializes in uh, servo drives. And today I'm talking to you about our other division, which is US Fuel Cells. US Fuel Cell creates hydrogen PEM fuel cells. We specialize in medium to heavy duty applications, so class six, class seven, class eight. This means that the gross vehicle weight of the, ve of the vehicles that we operate and we deploy will be 20,000 tons and, and more, and exceeding that. You can see by the range of vehicles on the right-hand side that there's quite, a, there's quite a breadth, there's quite a depth. We have shuttle buses, commercial buses, we have utility vehicles, we have construction vehicles. There's quite a, quite a range. So for us, the power viability of hydrogen fuel cells is not a question. There's no question about, por about power, there's no question about torque. The question really for us is about cost of ownership, total cost of ownership for the operator. So that's cost of the fuel, cost of service and maintain, and the cost of emissions. And because the commercial operations are so well defined, we can very well quantify that cost for our customers. The Fuel cell is an element of the electric powertrain, and there's pretty much unanimous agreement with OEMs and manufacturers that electric is the way forward. Why is that? The reason for that is, if I look at the three graphs on the right-hand side, which concentrates on commercial vehicles, what we see here is the urban drive cycle for each of these. Now, there's a lot of information here. The key thing to look at is the blue band at the bottom of each of those graphs, graphs represents rolling state. So let's call it steady state activity. And steady state activity is the easiest activity for powertrains. All the rest of the activity is either heavy load, acceleration and drag, or loss through braking, or indeed through idling in the case of the buses. And that, reduce, that uh, results in 50% of the total energy being wasted uh, in loss or in idling. And it also results in 80% of the emissions happening in this area in the top section of the graph. So that is the reason why the electric powertrain is, uh, is the way to go, because in the upper section of the graph, uh, we don't have that energy loss. The question then really becomes, where does the energy source come from? So there's many different th uh, thinking on this. There's, uh, it could come directly from battery. It could come from diesel or gasoline hybrid. It could come from compressed natural gas or indeed hy hydrogen fuel cells. And each one of these energy sources has its pros, has its cons. For us, our business is, uh, is hydrogen fuel cells, and that's where we believe that uh, the benefits of the hydrogen fuel cell uh, is excellent in an urban environment for commercial vehicles. 
I'll give you two examples of uh, two similar vehicles that we have deployed. As I said at the start, the US hybrid group uh, develops the full suite of electric powertrain and, and hybrid powertrains. So this is a battery electric class 8 uh, truck. So it has a 240 kilowatt, kilowatt hour battery driving a 320 kilowatt direct motor. And this truck has a range of approximately 150 kil um, kilometers. Now we take that truck and we developed a variant of that truck which has a fuel cell. So it's an 80 kilowatt fuel cell which is feeding power into a 26 kilowatt battery. So the battery mass we were able to reduce. The total mass of the vehicle is still a 37 ton vehicle. One of the, one of the interesting things in the commercial environment is that we cannot trade paid lo payload for a battery. If you look at the passenger vehicle, Quite often, to achieve a 350 kilo, kilo mile range, kilometer range, maybe half of the gross vehicle weight is taken up with battery. We don't have that option in the commercial world. So in this case, we still have the same payload. It's still a 37 ton truck, but the range has now increased to 350 ki kilometers. And that shows a, a, a clear benefit for the, the hydrogen fuel cell. There's a lot of information here. Uh, as I said a moment ago, each of the various energy sources have their own pros and cons, and they each fit into a certain area of the transportation environment. Um, for us, the urban environment is where the hydrogen fuel cell um, really, really wins, or really comes out quite well. So what we're looking at here is the miles of range that can be achieved per minute of charging or per minute of fueling. Um, this area on the right-hand side here represents pure electric. So you're talking for the, the, the class leader, which would be a passenger vehicle like a Tesla, that's approximately three miles per minute of charging. As we move from pure electric into hybrid or into uh, electric with an extra power source on board, that range starts to rise up. And when we look at hydrogen, this is where the hydrogen um, uh, has a, an excellent range of maybe 10 to, 10 to 15 miles per minute charging. Diesel is still obviously much better. And that's why for us, diesel is not, di oh, sorry, diesel is excellent for long range. And that's where diesel really still is, is, uh, is the class leader. Hydrogen at the moment, we don't think it's a, it's a suitable solution right this minute for long range. But urban short range, hydro hydrogen, gives, uh, hydrogen fuel cells give um, an excellent, excellent delivery. Okay. This is an example on the right hand side of one of our, uh, this is our 80 kilowatt fuel cell assembly. This is the complete assembly in one box and as compared to uh, a Euro 6 diesel engine. For us, accessibility is a key element of the hydrogen industry. So accessibility has two elements. On one side, there's the accessibility for the operator to be able to take a hydrogen fuel cell system and apply it directly into uh, an existing vehicle. So we talk about this fuel cell being completely integrated. So fuel processing unit, air processing unit, water management, power processing unit, and balance of plant equipment is all in this single box. The operator can take this box, uh, take their existing diesel engine, for example, out and apply this fuel cell directly in. The integration into the vehicle will be very, very familiar for any operator or indeed their maintenance team. The connections are the 12-volt battery. The vehicle cooling is the same as 50-50 water glycol. There's a fuel supply from uh, a tank. Fine, in this case, it's a hydrogen tank, but the principle is still the same. There's an exhaust system coming out. And the, that black box that I spoke about, that fuel cell, has integrated engine mounts. So for us, the operator can take that um, fuel cell, and it's a completely transparent and relatively easy exchange with an existing diesel engine. So that's one side of the accessibility. The other side of, it, of the accessibility is maybe a little bit more esoteric, and that is how we think about hydrogen fuel cells. Um, and this is really for the industry to look at, because hydrogen fuel cells, there's 
uh, it's an excellent uh, level of technology, it's a very high level of technology, but outside of the industry, it can often be seen as a, as a little bit um, obtuse or maybe a little bit hard to, hard to penetrate. So for us, we think it's an education process needed whereby the subsystems on a hydrogen fuel cell can actually be relatively easily compared to an existing combustion engine. Fuel processing unit, that's an injector. Water management unit, that's a cooling system. Um, air processing unit, that's a compressor, it's a pump. Uh, and the power processing unit is an ECU. So again, the actual subsystems are very familiar. So a maintenance team for a uh, operator, for a fleet operator, can pick this uh, fuel cell up and work with it quite easily. This is our 80 kilowatt fuel cell on a dyno. And we have designed the fuel cell to be able to withstand all of the rigors that you would expect a diesel engine um, to withstand. So on this dyno, uh, we test for power. We test three degrees of freedom, pitch, yaw, and roll. We test for temperature, we test for humidity, and we're able to apply all of the shock loading that you would expect from a, a, a diesel engine. It's also configured to have J1939 CAN, di uh, CAN connection, which means that all of the diagnostics is very familiar to a maintenance crew. Again, familiarity is a key, a key design principle for us. This is, a, again, another uh, Class 8 truck. And in this case, the hydrogen cell has been mounted at the rear of the cabin, just like you would see a compressed national, na natural gas uh, truck, which are relatively common or becoming common in, common in the States. This is the same fuel cell, and it's a different operation. So again, showing the adaptability of the fuel cell. Again, it's an 80 kilowatt fuel cell. It's a battery dominant bus, and this is an operation in the Coachella Valley region in California. And once again, the same fuel cell, 80 kilowatts, and in this case, it's in a, it can be used in deployed in shuttle buses and utility buses are in cargo vans. So just showing the adaptability and going back to my point at the start that the performance is not a question for us. We're currently working on a program that's Department of Energy funded, um, whereby we're creating a fuel extender, sorry, a, a fuel cell range extender version of the Nissan NV200 commercial vehicle. And in this case, it's a 10 kilowatt fuel cell. The fuel cell division was formerly uh, part of the UTC Corporation, and the US Hybrid Group took over that division in 2013. So the history we have in our group has the best part of 20 years of actual deployment of fuel cells. If we go back to the very early, it's the Gen 1, this is the early 2000s, that was a 20 kilowatt fuel cell with a range of about 300 kilometers. We've developed that through, and at the moment, we use a lot of real in-the-field data coming from our Generation 3 fuel cells, which is, the, uh, which is this here on the right-hand side. In 2013, US Hybrid took over the fuel cell division from UTC, and a key design change that we were able to make at that point was, the, was to be able to fully integrate all of the, ba the balance of plant equipment that US Hybrid already develops. So at this point here in generation four, the DC-DC converter was able to be completely integrated into the fuel cell. And again, that helps promote that transparent black box assembly that we talk about. I showed you, my, I showed you our, our dyno earlier on. Um, obviously on that dyno, we can do accelerated lifetime testing. But in, uh, to get robustness, real robustness, that, that can only come from that can only come from real world testing, and this is a bus that's been operating in Oakland for four to five years. The, we have twelve buses operating in Oakland. The leading bus has twenty three thousand hours of operation with zero stack failure. Now that's leading bus, and that's not accumulated. And each of the subsequent buses have zero stack failure as well. So when we talk about robustness, we have real live field data to prove this. Um, this is a graph very quickly showing the efficiency benefit of hydrogen over uh, CNG. What's interesting here is that 
even though there's an extra step in the hydrogen process, because it always starts with natural gas, and it needs to be reformed to extract the hydrogen, even with that extra step, there's, an extra, there's a 15% fuel saving. Um, I see Mona, Mona's telling me that I need to hurry up, so um, I, I will just skip forward. This is a, a, probably the most important slide then after that, which is that a single kilogram of hydrogen is equivalent to two gallons of diesel and two and a half gallons of, of gasoline. There's a, a lot of information we can talk about. I'm very happy to talk in more depth if people want to come to, come to my booth at C34. I'm just here on the other side of the of the, um, the board there. Um, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. thank you very much, Mike. Once again, you can visit Mike and continue discussing a pure mm. hydrogen-based cars Here. just behind the technical forum. So yes. once again, thank you very much. Upcoming talk in just a few minutes time, so you can stay seated. We'll continue with heavy duty vehicles. We'll, for that, we'll hear Dr. Ufe Boro, Vice President Technology for Nell Hydrogen, and that will start just in a few minutes. Thank you.